Hello Legionnaires, welcome back, we're here in Middle Earth once again with a glorious 4v4 here as we check out the Flames of the North submod once again for Dawnless Day's Total War and this is a glorious land battle that comes down to the wire. So make sure you got your popcorn ready, get yourself a drink of your choice and get ready for an insane Lord of the Rings battle as we have uh, all five of the Flames of the North factions here being represented we have two Arnor factions over here, Arnor being one of the uh, new factions. We have Bree as well, and they're being joined by Imladris, who are here, the elves of Imladris, ready to go. And they will be taking on uh, Angmar here, which is one of the new orc factions that you get with the submod. We also have uh, Rudar over here as well. We have a, a second Rudar army here, and then we have also got uh, Minas Morgul way off there to the left. So yeah, we have uh, one, two... Uh, three, four, and then five. Yeah, all five of the new factions are here. And I'm really excited for this one. Um, I know for a fact this is a really good one. We, I was uh, doing this uh, battle on my stream. And I thought it's so close that I need to show it off for those of you that maybe missed out on it on the stream. If you want to make sure that you get involved in some um, stream battles. Or just make sure that you uh, don't miss out on it. Make sure to hit that notification bell. Um, you can then make sure you don't miss out on any streams. Or you can join that Discord uh, that I have. Link is in the description if you want to get involved in some battles. Or send in your own uh, replays that you may have. You may have some excellent ones. I do not know that uh, I need to be watching. But yes, if you guys have been enjoying the Dawnless Days content and want to see some more of it, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and feel free to comment as well if you've got... Uh, if you, just to show the love, really, that's all there is. And Angmar, uh, not Angmar, sorry, our Norian Raiders going in here. So yeah. Rudar is kind of like one of the um, like the Splinter Kingdoms that comes out of Arnor. It's kind of a weird situation, actually. Um, and looking at this faction as well, I also feel like this Arnor faction is more like the Reforge Kingdom more than it is actually like Arnor of old. Because uh, they're really powerful. They're really well-rounded, is, uh, is this faction. They've got good, strong, heavy uh, cavalry. Infantry is pretty good as well. Archers, pikes, uh, slash pole arms are good. Spears are pretty solid as well. Yeah, it's a good, really good faction. That's sure. Maybe Shock, a bit so-so. Actually, High King, Blade Masters. Uh, the Medium, it says, and uh, Train. So, yeah, I guess maybe that's their weak spot, but they're still pretty solid. Um, that is for sure. I'm excited to see how this one goes down. Uh, you can see the plan here was to uh, just kind of pin down this uh, Arnor. Oh, my gosh. That looked like a charge going in there. Here we go. Cav coming in. It's these Servants of Angmar coming in. Not a bad charge on them, that's for sure. Yeah, the plan was to try and basically double team this uh, this Arnold player here. Um, I was also going to just try and um, minimize the engagement I had with the other Arnold army. And then we're going to have Minas Mughal here, just flank around the flank and just try and do as much damage as possible. You can see Knights of Arthurdain here already setting up. This is a very elite cavalry unit here. Uh, and they are definitely more than a match for any of the cavalry that uh, Minas Mughal can bring. And all they can bring is actually the Witch King. So, um, yeah, they're, they're kind of lacking when it comes to cavalry. And even trolls. They don't even have trolls available to them. Um, which is a shame. But yeah, decent charge into these swords early on. We might get another charge off here, actually. In they go. Arnold not learns from his lessons. We're going to see a second charge into these poor Arnorian swords. And in they go. They'll flatten those guys. Shield wall or not, it does not matter. And as you can see there, yeah, losing decisively. This unit is going to get cut down. Uh, we have got cavalry now uh, clashing over on this side, so we have some Arnorian raiders that are also getting the same sort of treatment that uh, Rudar has been handing out. And it does seem like the rest of the battle is not yet quite engaged. We've got uh, Rudar over here setting up some uh, some cavalry. Looks like this Rudar play actually did bring a lot of like sort of blade rabble and also, um, let's see if I can find them, defenders of Rudar, these guys, these spears. They're very light uh, spear unit, but they're also unbreakable. They have like 250 morale. So uh, this 250 man unit is just never going to break. It's, it's very, very useful. Here we go. Fire arrows coming in. And Ingo. Uh, Legion. I think there was some shock infantry in here as well, actually. Yeah, Legion of Gundabad being thrown in. So they've got some, you know, some actual troops down there. They should try and pierce through. But we've got guards of Ladris. Plus also spears here. Yeah, so this is going to be a tough fight. That's for sure to try and break through. Especially with Rabble. Oh, 
We'll see how they can do. Breeze crossbows as well. They've also brought crossbows. Uh, they are also really good. The Gatewash there. Yeah, really nasty unit uh, to try and stop. And you can see already Minus Mughal blanking around here. He's got his pole arms in behind. What are these? These are just like gu uh, Guardians of Morgul Vale. They, yeah, they're flanking in behind slowly. Slowly but surely they're going in. Those Anorian swords have none of it. And it's getting a bit chaotic on this flank over here. We've cavalry, infantry all getting uh, mixed up in there. There's shock infantry as well. We've got some uh, great axes of Rudar. They're being sent in the uh, Rudar Wildman. Influenced by the Dark Lord. Now fighting alongside him. But yeah, if you want to check out the Flames of the North mod uh, yourself, it's like a sub mod for Dawn of Stays. So you will need Dawn of Stays for it to work. But uh, I'll leave a link for it in the description. And of course, I always leave the Dawn of Stays uh, mod in the description for you guys that still haven't got it. It really is a great mod. Certainly if you've got a Tiller and you love Lord of the Rings, it's a must have. These are Norian Raiders, though. They're not that special. Well, they are match. I mean, both sides are losing in that fight, apparently. Swords, Warriors of Arnor and our Norian Raiders both are unimpressed with that fight, apparently. We've got Cav actually getting in here amongst a, a general, Sons of Angmar. They're getting uh, attacked by Knights of Arthurdane, which is uh, actually needs respelling. It says King Hutz of Arthurdane. Just small things like that that need uh, altering for this mod. Keep slicing and dicing, boys. Yeah, this is not good. They're going to need some spears or something in there. They've got all those cheap spears that they brought up. Yeah, you can see Defenders Rudar there. They need to get some of those in to support their general. Because the general, yeah, losing to size please. Also probably getting shot by this crossbow unit over here. The Gatewatch here. Probably inflicting a lot of damage onto their unit if they are. Uh, it also might be archers. There is a bowman at men at arms back there that also look like they're shooting. Um, but really good stuff over here happening. We have the uh, the general over here. The Witch King is engaging some of that precious Arnorian cavalry. Knights of Arthur Dane there. They'll be regretting their moves. And we've got Shock and Jugging in here as well. Guards of Stiddleth and Goal. It is looking very good across the front, really. Uh, well, certainly if you're rooting for evil. If you're not, if you're rooting for Arnor, not so good. These High King Guard look like they're holding quite well. I also believe, yet yeah, that it's more like United Kingdom, or like Reunited Kingdom, because we have High King Alessa over here as well. He's a spear unit, weirdly, as well. But yeah, so Alessa is obviously the name that um, Aragorn takes when he becomes King of Gondor and Arnor. Like, more to why I think this is more like Reunited Kingdom, it should be called, than Arnor. But he's battling down there. I don't think there's actually an Aragorn, um, like, model, but... But yeah, apart from that, then, it's just basically... Just a High King unit. He's a nice Arthur down here, they're going to die. But also, this General here, look at this, 18 men left. He's going to get focused down if he's not careful. There is a nice Arthur down here as well, 40 men left. That's in, um, definitely able to thread in that, uh, that General, put it like that. If he doesn't get out of combat... These archers here, slowing down the cab for now, but they need to get that general out of there. Rudar's infantry is not great. I mean, they did bring a lot of unbreakable units, but still does not matter. And there you go. He's broken. Eight men left. I don't think he's coming back. That is a big shame there. Big, big shame. Over on this side here, the elves are battling away with Angmar. Pikes as well in here as well. I mean, Elven and Pikes looking like they're going to do pretty well. They're making a bit of a cord in here, trying to support their fights that they're in. What have we got down here? We've got Goblin Mercenary Spears in the fight. It's a pretty cool unit. I'll see if I can... Got... They kind of remind me of like Shogun 2 with all the big flags that they have like floating on their back, each allies single unit having one. And Allies lost a general though. This is bad. I think that might be Rudal. Rudal's finally lost his general actually. He routed, re-rallied and then got killed. So yeah, big problem there. Early on, 
for uh, Faruda losing his general. I mean, most of his units, like I said, are unbreakable. The Rabble, though, I'm not so sure. They might just be cheap trash. These Knights of Arthur Dane, though, are having a fun time in the back lines here. And we've got a rear charge coming in from Rudar Horseman. They're going into the back lines here, trying to help out over here. Actually charging into a bit into pole arms. They need to be careful. careful. These guards of Illuminas. Uh, though they are losing, they are still a threat if you charge onto them head on. Knights of Arthur Dane here as well. They're getting attacked in the flank. They are... Combat even for now. They're actually beating the servants of Angmar General here. So this is a big win here as well for uh, for Arnor if they can kill that Rudar general. But they are losing in a few other places here. Legion of Gundabad also starting to slice and dice through some of these units here. Heavily armored shock infantry unit. Got that sort of like orcish helmet look to them. But yeah, I mean, this is not good here for uh, for Arnold. Like, I mean, Minas Morgul is just flanking them, surrounding them. Whether they would have been better to give ground, he just kind of stood his ground. I mean, it was pretty hard for him to uh, to try and retreat. Most of his infantry line was engaged, and it has been engaged since the start of the fight. Of these, like, High King's Guards, and so they can't get out of there, really. But um, Minas Morgul is not just going to surround them. Balance power is way in favor of uh, evil right now. It's 7,200 against 4,000. Uh, in favor of the forces of evil at the moment. So, massive, massive advantage. The Blade Rabble over here as well. They are suffering against these Knights of Arthur Dane in their charges. The Trolls over here as well. They've thrown in their Trolls. I don't think they've actually really done a lot. And um, these Northern Trolls of Angmar, you can see, breaking there. I think they've been focused down by Elven Archers. It seems like these goblin mercenaries uh, spears are doing a decent job, but they, it looks like they're about to get rear charged here by Knights of Bree that have been sent over to support the elves. Um, I guess Bree just didn't feel like he needed uh, infantry on his side. Uh, we also have a uh, Knights of Bree over there getting killed off as we have uh, Morgamir here getting focused down by elves. They kill Morgamir. Though he seems like he's a long way off being killed. They kill him though. Angmar will surely chain route. Uh, El Orc morale is not that great, certainly once the general is lost. We've got Guards of Imladris down here. The newly converted Elven unit from a uh, from a Pike unit to a Sword unit. They look badass. That's for sure. I like the like the capes that they're wearing. It's one of the prettiest looking units for sure. And yeah, I mean they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. These orcs. We've got the Guards of Imladris on one side, and they've got the Noldorian Pike on the other. And they got more guards of him like just charging down on them here. Not good for Angmar, really. Not good at all. He's in a rough spot. He just needs to hold on and delay the elves and allow his teammates to maybe try and make some more progress. Because over here they are mopping up Arnor very nicely, our Rudar and Minas Morgul. Uh, the other Rudar player, again, also probably kind of has to just hold his ground. Enemy General is dead. Oh, that is uh, High King Alessa dead, actually. He's just been killed off by the Witch King, as, of all people, as well. How ironic. We have another General going in. Breeze General has been sent across the river. Very isolated on his own. A very risky move there, really. Um, though he is trying to take out the Witch King, I think. It was his plan. It's just a... It's, it's easy for, like, Minas Morgul to get reinforcements in there and help make this almost a suicidal mission. And, uh, yeah, really the uh, Witch King needs to be careful himself that he doesn't get himself killed here. Crossbow's very close to that river line. Could do a lot of damage. He's looked like he's going to make a retreat now. And there is still cavalry over here actually bothering. He's in Night's Arthur and they're bothering these Shelob Hunters. I don't know if they'll kill them. They are just slowing them down, stopping them from firing. Yep, yeah, that's that's uh, the last really resistance of Arnor on that side, and now it's now down to uh, Bree over here to stop Rudar before his allies arrive. Cowards. 
But he has no general, you've got to remember. And he's got a lot of rabble. And they're starting to, they're starting to show. They've got also the famous floating men of Arnold here. Look at them. The famous floating men. But some of his units will hold forever. Like these defenders down here. Defenders of Ruda holding the line. Oh, this is not good though. Guards of Imladris, they're flanking him behind. And uh, though these units are uh, unbreakable, they'll certainly do a lot of damage with kills. With a rear charge like this. And the elves causing all sorts of problems. Slicing and dicing through these defenders. Really nicely done. Uh, the defenders over here, I think they're just in combat. I don't know if they really need to go into combat, just stand there, and then they could have just at least been a, a threat um, for these, like, spearmen at arms. Because I feel like just engaging them is a losing battle. But if they just stand there, they like, stood back a bit, then the spearmen still have to stand in this choke point and waste their time there. High King's Guard. So we've still got some Arnorians that have managed to get across the river. They're being attacked by, uh, by Rabble here. Few brave Arnorians holding on the holding on to the fight here. We've got what is this? Uh, great swords of Bree. They're taking on defenders of Rudar. Yeah, that's an easy fight for them. Spears against Shock. Let's go and check on the uh, elves quickly. Oh, it looks like the elves have wrapped up uh, wrapped up Angmar. That is. Kind of sad to see, but Elrond, by the way, very low on men. He's down to 17. I think he was fighting Morgamir, the general for Angmar himself. And the elves are now sending over much needed reinforcements to help out Bree. Numbers still not looking great. It's 4,000 versus 2,500, but they've closed that gap significantly. But they need to close it a little more. York's engaged here. Doing their bit. And we have Cavalry actually rushing up this hill. I think they're going in for the archers. Need to be careful, there's pikes here with pole arms. And these, uh, these horsemen aren't that great anyway. I think they're lights. Yeah, light shock cab. We have got the dragon, um, green dragon guard here as well. These guys just give me straight up sort of like third age or like uh, great cafe vibes. They just give a very sort of Asian sort of style look with the. Uh, with the plumes on the back of their helmets. It just looks, yeah, looks very cool though. I do like them. And they're now about to go into battle with these guardians of the Morgul Vale. So we'll see who comes out on top of that one. And the elves are sitting on the edge of the tree line. They're now making an appearance. Oh, Breeze General is really rough. Down 80 men wavering. Do not think they can throw him in again, really. If they do, it would be suicidal. We've got archers down here for both Bree and the elves fighting. Looks like against Disciples of Angmar. Are they just called Disciples of Angmar? I can't remember. Here they are. They're pretty solid speed. Not great at killing stuff, but they'll do their job. Legion of Gundabad here. Looks like they're about to go into combat with the Spearmen there. The rear charging over here as well. We've got Gardens of Morgul Vale just poking into the back of these men. You can see the Spears over here. Trapped by the Legion of Go uh, Gundabad. Excellent stuff. Hip slicing and dicing, boys. It does then pull through, which is kind of a bit of a shame. Like, the, this unit is long gone and trapped. It's going to be a lot of free kills, though, for this uh, for the Legion of Gundabad, which I'll take. But I'd rather have kept the whole unit trapped there. But we're going to get this great sort of Bree as well. This guy's been uh, trapped in the in the water. Weighed down by that heavy armor. And there you go. I think easily routed. Nicely done there by Minas Morgul. And as you can see, go to the tactical map so quickly. We'll zoom in. You can see that there's sort of like a, a cordon being made by the, uh, the defenders or the uh, armies of good uh, on this sort of red line here. You've got the choke point here that they're holding. And then they're trying to make some sort of a... Um, a defensive cordon around the crossbows and any archers that have ammo left. And they're just going to fight here. So really the uh, the attackers, I guess you could call them, also just the force of evil. They just need to flank around, keep going wider and wider. 
stretching that line. Eventually, the elves won't be able to hold everywhere. The elves can't stop everyone. Awesome seeing like good versus evil though, you can just tell so easily. See like they're just the hordes of black armor rushing towards you, and then it's just like the pockets of silver and gold armor holding on, fighting for their dear lives. These Noldorian Pike are losing. I don't know what to. Maybe they're getting flanked. Oh, I think they are by these Guardians of Morgul, uh, of the Morgul Vale who made a bit of a breakthrough here. They are being sh slammed in the face by the Guards of Imladris, but whether it'll be enough, the Morgul Vale seems like they are taking a lot of casualties, though. Keep it up, Elves. You're doing a good job slicing and dicing through these Guardians. And you can see wavering units here, knights breaking, guardians of Morgul Vale breaking. If, like, Minas Morgul is a mass route, that is, like, going to be catastrophic. I think the Witch King has died. I don't know where the Witch King has died. I think he got sniped over here or something, because I can see a few dead horsemen. So I'm going to presume he got sniped here, um, because I can't see him. And I don't remember seeing him dying in the battle either. We got no notification about it uh, in the replay, and I didn't in the battle either. So I don't know when it happened, but Minas Morgul is without a general. Um, so they could just chain route. And you are seeing units actually starting to break over here. This is not looking good. Bands power shifting a little bit back in favor uh, towards good as we have 2,000 versus 1,300. There's one unit breaks from in a small goal and like it just starts a chain reaction. More and more follow. Freeze archers here very much in the front line now. We're seeing a shift in forces, more getting sent to the left hand side to try and replace the uh, the depleting Morgul Vale uh, ranks over here. But shocking with troop against Spears, it's an easy victory here. System of uh, those elite Minas Morgul shock. Don't think we've seen them break anytime soon. There you go, an easy win on those uh, Spears. I'm going to see a rear charge as well by another shock infantry into the back of these pikes. Feeding kills right now to the shock infantry are the, uh, are the people are good. I don't know really what to call them. The good players? It sounds a bit contradictory. They have a bad move, play a bad move. The alliance, the last alliance players. Starting to wave a hair of the blade rabble, that's not good. And the shock image is getting thrown in there, trying to stop those crossbows, which are starting to now have their effect. As units get weaker and weaker, their armor piercing bolts are just deadly. But you know it's also deadly? Certain Gold's blades as they slice through those gatewatch, halving that unit almost in one blow. Really nicely done. And they should take out this bowman men at arm as well. And it's not like 12-12, crossbows can't arc, so they need a clear line of sight if they want to be uh, able to be operational. Balance of power, though, very close. 1,100 versus 700. Could go either way still. Um, really need a bit of a chain route, though, over here against these guards of Imladris. They are holding really well. Really, really well. Too well, I would say. The men are losing hope. These pikes, they need to be careful when they engage them, though. Uh, an ally has been routed. I think that might be one of the Rudar players, but I'm... Uh, or it might be Angmar, actually. I think it's Angmar has gone. Which is a shame, but it's inevitable. He had a bit of a rough day facing a very strong elven army and player. You need to be careful. Again, the guards are still in goal. They're going, getting a clean line of sight onto these uh, Gatewatch. They're just giving them what they want. 
And it looks like we're actually going to see one of the Gatewatch go into combat over here. Seems like they are no match, though, for these uh, guards of Citizen Goal, who with their big blades just slice and dice through them. And we're seeing more spears come in. Just going to try and keep routing stuff. Yep, doing a good job there. Catching these pikes. Race, uh, chasing them down. Shelob's hunters there. Really cheap. Archie and doing exactly that. Getting some nice kills there. But now guards are just pulling out of their uh, fight here on the on the front lines. To try and deal with the rear line issues. The crossbows over here still getting uh, harassed as well. Got big spears here that are, are they surrounding. Yeah, these guys are surrounding the guards of Melandris. Uh, Elrond is over here. He's actually helping to try and kill off one of the remaining Shelob Hunter units with ammo. Very important to do this. If they get rid of the archers, then uh, they can't shoot and pierce that thick elven armor. Well, thick, but also weirdly thin and fine. There's one remaining arch unit with ammo. We need a few good volleys from that arch unit to try and break the try and break some of these units. Or even just shoot down Elrond. If they kill Elrond, that might be enough to cause a route to the elves. But they have good morale anyway. If the elves think there's half a chance of winning, they will just carry on the fight. With or without a general. These spears here are gonna rush them. And they're actually wavering. That is hilarious. Come on. Come on, uh, hunters. Just stand and fight. You can kill these guys off pretty easily. We've got some shock infantry arriving. If they get sent into the back of those spears, they might break them. There you go. Those uh, those spears broke against the uh, the cheap, cheap archers. Even better. And look at this. Band style is now even. It's 295 versus 289. That definitely, at this point, odds are probably in favor of the elves. But we will see if they can kill... Some of these remaining Bree units, they might be able to cause a chain route, might uh, Rudar and I think it's Minas Morgul that are left. But yes, if you guys are enjoying this battle, it's certainly been a close one, that is for sure. Do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show you support. It does really help out the channel. And look at that, Spearmen at Arms. They have been broken. Guards and Landris hopefully will be next. They need to like pull out of combat and then get behind them, really. Get a rear charge onto them. But the problem is these crossbows then could then murder them as well. Defenders of Rudar have just been killed to a man by Elrond. They, Like I said, they fight to the last man. And Elrond took that quite literally. They're down to eight men. Elrond's bodyguard is in tatters. Here comes Elrond with a little rear charge. Will it make a difference? I don't know. He's gone in. There he is, Elrond. Fire on the front lines with his red armor. It looks pretty sick to be fair, his armor. You see it in, like, The Hobbit, I'm pretty sure. As well. Looks pretty cool in that. It's actually causing these uh, guards of citizen gold to uh, to waver. And I think we're going to see the crossbows now get involved. If they start firing there, they might kill Elrond. And who knows? Maybe that will change the balance of power. It's 69 versus 162. It is incredibly close. These 60 remaining men are all uh, disciples of Angmar. They're incredibly good at holding. Um, they're they're kind of like Citadel Guard, but on meth. These guys are really, really good. All like Iron Guards, really. But Orc versions. Well, evil men, I think they really are. They're not Orcs. These three brave men here defending each other back to back. And there you go. One unit breaks. That's not good. And I think it's just that remaining one now. And you can see balance power way in favor of the elves. 
who and Bree, who are like the only ones remaining. It has been a insane battle. It really could have gone either way. Um, it was a really fun one to play. A bit laggy when we played it, so I felt like it needed a replay, um, like a, a video to show off how close it was, which is in like a shorter period of time. Um, the spear actually rallied, and it's going to try and chase down Aaron. Aaron doesn't deserve to live. He, he's uh, got too lucky in this battle, let's put it like that. Too lucky. And these disciples will break in a second. And then we have a victory, but only just with 146 men left for the elves and Bree. It was a certainly a valiant defeat. Well played to all that took part in this one. It was an incredible land battle. And yeah, I was playing in this one. It was one of the, uh, part of the stream, as I was saying. So yeah, definitely a fun one to take part in with the fellow subs. Uh, 117 kills I got with my servants of Angmar here. 153 with the Arnorian Rangers. Very good because they're pretty terrible. Uh, Grey Axes of Rudar, 105. Kind of disappointed. Kind of hope they were going to get more kills. Legion of uh, Gundabad, my best uh, units by far. 169, 100 and, uh, 260. My uh, Disciples getting 144, which is not too bad. My uh, Rudar Horseman getting 263, outscoring my Servants of Angmar, who got 117. Then we have K1 playing as the other Rudar army. He brought that spam army of uh, these like ch cheap spears. Don't know if it really worked, but if he brought maybe a better army, maybe we would have won. I don't know. It's hard to say. This formula nearly pulled off. Um, his only units that really got into the, like, did really well with his cav. Uh, 92 kills with Rudar horses. Uh, Sons of Angmar getting 177. Uh, and, and then we've got K player playing as Angmar. Had a rough game as well against the elves. Didn't really get much in the way of kills. 42 kills with the trolls is rough to see. Uh, 73 and 66 with the uh, mercenary uh, goblin cleavers. And yeah, not much else. Morgamir getting 53. Yeah, rough game for him. Then we have um, Aesthetic Monkey here, who's playing as Minas Morgul. Gets some really big kills for him. 176 kills with the uh, Witch King. Then we've got 124 with the Morgul Blade Legion. Then his Knights of Minas Morgul getting 181. And then the Guards of Sirith and Gold, uh, Shock Infantry getting 100, uh, 358. 439 kills. And then the Pole Arms, 114, 177, 156. And then we have the uh, the arch here. The Sheila Pond is getting 170. Then we have Holy Banana getting some massive kills of Minladris. 258 kills with Elrond. 468 kills with these guards of Minladris here. And 446 with another. And the other one got 340, which is not too shabby either. Then we have the Noldorian Swords getting 274 kills. 222 with the Noldorian Pikes, as you're good to see. 218 with the other Pike unit. His archers did really well as well, getting 162 kills, 187. And then his Cav getting 117. Then we have uh, Nuno Reves playing as Arnor, bringing in quite a small uh, small army, I feel like, compared to some of the other players. Um, 97 kills with his Sword Warriors of Arnor here. His Shock getting 191 kills. Uh, his um, High King Guard getting 167. 155 with the Guards of Anumanas. His arch is getting 115, and his cav 258 kills, the best of the three there. Then we have famous Austrian playing as Bree, 218 kills with his great swords of Bree, 337 with the other one. I feel like these kills were massively inflated though, killing off defenders of Rudar, who were like 250 man units, but still incredibly good kills. Uh, 317, 219, 229 with these spears. I mean, all the spears did well. He brought a lot of spears, to be fair, actually. Uh, 249 kills with the green dragon guard. Very nicely done. Then we have the bow, uh, bowman met at arms, here getting 136 kills. Uh, and then he's got 458 kills with the gate watch. 290 with the other one. And then he's uh, Knights of Bree getting 155 kills. And then we have Cyrus playing as the final Arnor army. Uh, his... Yeah, army did pretty rough, actually, like his infantry. Bar, there's dismounted Knights of Arthurdain, which got 299 kills. Uh, and then his Dunedain Rangers got 155 kills. But there you go, guys. That is today's battle. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.